Hey, it's Jeremy here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to vectorize some lettering. I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to do it properly and how to get some nice curves when you're doing some hair lettering and you want to vectorize it in Illustrator. So what I've done, I've got my sketch and what I did, I did pencil first. I did some iterations. And then what I did, I just inked it with a normal Copic Multiliner um, 0.5 in black just to get the lines to come out a bit. Now I took it to Photoshop, cleaned it up a little bit, um, fixed some of the letters and just bumped up the contrast and I just dragged it into Illustrator now and you can see it's just a JPEG that I took with my phone so what we can do now is we're going to go to our layers panel so if you go to window layers you can find that there and get this layer out and what we're going to do we want to lock this layer so we can actually just click this lock like that or we can actually double click on it change the name sketch and click template and what's going to do is actually going to dim it I might dim it to 60% and I want to leave it the color like that, press OK. And what it does, it locks the layer, keeps it as a template, and it's going to leave the sketch actually dimmed a little bit so we can trace over it. So I'm just going to make a new layer and call it design. I'll, I'll go Mary, the first word. So we're going to start working on our first word. So what we use to vectorize lettering, press P for the pen tool. The pen tool was the, pretty much the main tool we used to create paths and shapes so we can actually create a great um, looking curves and great letters. So we've got the pen tool and I usually pick like Futusha or like a really bright um, pink whatever you call it and get a bright color so we can see what we're doing. So make sure you're on the right layer and we're just going to go ahead. So the key is to make sure your points a vertical and horizontal. So I want to start with the most furthest point of the curve and you'll see what I'm actually doing, I click once and then what you want to do is you want to click again and drag and hold shift and as you do this you can see as I'm doing that it's creating these cool curves and if I let go you can start to see how that curves coming out. It doesn't have to be perfectly with your um, sketch but you can work around that so you can see as I'm doing this you can see I'm creating these nice curves just like that. The good thing about this is we want to we can edit our handles as well. So if we hold Alt or Option, you can see your mouse changes and you can actually move these handles. So maybe you want to make it a bit thinner, a bit shorter or longer. The key is to try not to put one curve and overpower it. So you can see this handle is actually too short and this one's actually longer. I and mean, you don't want to make this too much too longer than this one because the curve starts going out of proportion. So we want to make sure that you know it's sort of even and we can play around make the other one bigger and that's how you plot points properly and it makes it work well. So to get back onto the point if you click off it you can just press P again and actually click back on the anchor and you can see it's going to start working again. So we want to try and aim for the furthest point. So you can see if I do it here it's going to be bad because then I have to put another point here, up here. It's, and it's going to mess up the curve. You want to try to go as far as you can to get the nicest curve. And you can even do it like this. See how instead of putting this one, you want to aim for as less anchor points as possible. And you can see how we're coming to get these nice little curves here. So the key is when you're doing this, you know, plot the right anchor points. Try and keep the angles even. Um, don't make one out of proportion than the other. or else it's going to look funny. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, go through and I'm just holding shift and dragging and trying to create my letters. And you can see you can actually round them off as well. If you click that and you can see you get this little button in the corner, it's actually round the corners and you can drag that in. But keep in mind when you do this, it's going to create two anchor points, which can you know be annoying because you're going to have to edit both of those later on. But for now, that's okay. And I'll just go through all these letters. And you can see down here, I'm going for the furthest point of the curve. Instead of doing it up here, you can see that you get a longer, better curve. And then you can edit these handles here. I'm just holding shift, or you can move it like that. I'm just creating smooth curves. You know, and it can work for any letters. It can be, you know, you can be working on sans serifs. 
or brush lettering. Even you can do this with calligraphy as well. So you got to play around. Sometimes it, the horizontal or vertical might not work, so you got to do the, one or the other. So you can see sometimes I couldn't do the whole round circle, so I had to do one point there, one point there on the end to make it get that nice curve. So you can see we have our first letter. You know, it looks looking all right. I can go back in there and edit the, the point and the corners because some of it's not working. But you can see how it turned out, and it looks really nice. So that's what you do, and this is how we create all our letters. You can just go through... Um, with connected letters like this, you can see how the E is connected to the two R's for Mary, for Mary. What we usually do is try and keep the pieces separate. So I'll just quickly build this, build this one out. So I'm actually going to keep this piece separate. So you can see I'm just going to close that off with a point. And you obviously won't see it when you when you finalize everything. And you can see we've got our second letter done. And the reason why we want to keep these separate is because you might want to put some shadows here. And maybe sometimes you want to edit these um curves separately and we don't want it to connect to that to the R because it's going to ruin both letters and it can take a bit longer in the long run when you're doing the editing and fixing it up so it's better to keep the connected letters separate so you have more flexibility so we've got our two letters and what I'll do you just go through all of them and that's how you create lettering so remember you want to keep your points anchor points as you know on the furthest curve think of a clock 12 um, AM, 12 PM, 6 PM and 3 PM. You can, you know, so all the way on the left or the right or 90 degrees, um, if that makes sense. <coughs> so you remember you want to place your anchor points, keep it at, <coughs> so remember you want to keep your anchor points as minimal as possible. You don't want to have too many because it actually ruins the curves and you want to have it, um, the curves as, cur as nice and smooth as possible and, that's why you keep the anchor points like that. Try and keep the handles even and don't overpower one another. You know, use both handles of the points to get some nice curves and, you know, it'll look, it'll look much better. Um, also, don't forget, you know, when you're doing lettering, break up the pieces, especially if the letters are connected. So you can always play around with it. Even like the swashy on the Y, I can actually go through and keep it separate to the actual letter of the Y. Um, if I want to add some shadows or effects to that separately. And it gives me flexibility to add, edit those points um, just like that. So once I've done all the letters, you can see now that they're all broken up into pieces. And I tweaked all the letters as much as I could to get as the curves as I want. So you can go through and tweak it. And you can see if I select all the type there, you can see how all the handles are straight, except for a few of them. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see all the horizontal handles and vertical handles. That's how you get the best curves. And that's how you make the lettering look the best that it can be. So... After I did that, I sort of dragged it into a new artboard and I created some guides because you want to create guides for your X height and your cap height or your base. This is your baseline and this is your X height. So it doesn't have to be, you know, 100% accurate, but that's how I did it. And you can see I tried to keep the type consistent and you can see there's some spacing errors here, but I can just go and move that type. And that's what I did. I tweaked some of the points and handles as well. Um, edit, edited some spacing issues. Um, I just did my best, you know, to play around with it and, you know, until I felt like it was okay. So that's what I did. Um, and you can see that, again, the handles have been edited and stuff like that, which is pretty sweet. And after that, you can just play around and create a cool type piece. So what I did, I just grouped them all together and then I just used a stroke. You can see this is a stroke. And then I just moved the orange down. I um, added some illustration elements, little presents and shapes. Um, and that's all the type. And added some shadows as well, just to give some dimension to the type or the swashes. You can see there. So yeah, that's how you got create. That's how you vectorize some lettering. Um, it's not too hard. You just got to practice and you know do your best. And you know just always play around with the anchor points. Try and get some nice curves. You know experiment, play around with different styles, um, and you'll get better and better. You know I'm not the best, but you, you know you can always learn a few things as well. Um, some good type guys on YouTube is Will Patterson and. 
Stephen Bradbury. They're pretty sweet as well. Um, they're really good with hand lettering. They specialize in that. So check out their channel as well. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if this was pretty cool. And don't forget to subscribe for more content every week.